Hello there and welcome to A-Level Further Maths. Here we're differentiating inverse trig functions so we can answer questions from exercise 3c. So let me show you how to do all of them then. We're going to go through arc sine, arc cos and arc tan. Let's start with the first one. Now what we're going to do first is set up a y equals arc sine x and that's that's referring to the inverse sine. Maybe you've seen it in uh, kind of GCSE maths as y equals sine minus 1 x. This is exactly the same thing as what we're differentiating here. Now sine inverse x is the opposite of the sine function. So to get rid of arc sine and just to rearrange this expression, I'm going to sine both sides. Now what will happen? Well arc sine is the opposite to sine. So if you do two functions, one the opposite of the other, you're back to whatever the input is of your arc sine. So it's going to be x on the right hand side. And on the left hand side I'll have to do the same, so it's going to be sine y equals x. So I've rearranged it to something I now know is familiar to be able to differentiate, but it's y. So how, what, what differentiation technique have I got available to me where I can integrate something to do with y? Well, in A-level maths, maybe you've seen the technique of what's called implicit differentiation. If you haven't, it might be worth just stopping this video and going to have a look for how to implicitly differentiate. So basically, what you need to do is differentiate normally, but then multiply by dy by dx. So I've differentiated this expression from here to here with respect to x. And the way I've done that is I've differentiated it normally, but then I'll have to multiply by dy by dx on the side. I've also differentiated this x to a 1. So I've effectively differentiated both sides of the equation. What I'll do now to rearrange this, because I want to work out what dy by dx is, is I'll, mult is I'll divide by cos y. So that's the answer. dy by dx equals 1 over cos y. But generally people aren't happy with this because there's y in the answer where there was x in the question. So we need to now somehow find a link between cos y and arc sine x. Now just a reminder that we have this identity always available to us. Sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. And I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit, take off away the sine squared onto the other side and square root. So I've got cos y is identical to 1 minus sine squared y. Now why might that be helpful? Well because it's cos y that I want to get rid of and I know that sine squared y is equal to x or x squared. Sine y is equal to x, that's what it says on the second line. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to replace sine y with x. So cos y is equal to 1 minus x squared all square rooted, um, so that's what I can now do. I can now replace cos y with the square root of 1 minus x squared. So dy by dx is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, and that is the answer to this question. Let's move Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Question B is the arc cos 1. It's done a very similar way. You might even want to pause the video and see if you can do this um, before I have a go at it. I'll now get started. So the first thing I'll do is get rid of the arc bit by causing both sides. And that will move the cos onto the other side of the equation. Then I'll apply the technique of implicit differentiation. So that means when I'm differentiating something with y in it, I need to differentiate it normally, but then multiply it by dy by dx. And differentiating the right-hand side, x turns into 1. The next thing I'll need to do is move the minus sine y onto the other side, because I want dy by dx equals... And then I need to turn the sine y back into x somehow. So I've got a link, my cos y is equal to x, so somehow I need to link sine with cos, and it's again through that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 identity. I'll move the cos squared on the other side and square root, and that gives me sine y is identical to the square root of 1 minus cos squared y. Now I know that cos is equal to x, so I'll just replace cos with x in that little identity. So sine y is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. It's actually the same as what we did in the last example. 
but the answer has a minus in front of it. It came from the differentiation of cos to minus sine. It's minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So it's very similar to the one before, just it's got a negative symbol in the front of it. And the last one we'll go through in this set of examples is arctan. Maybe you might want to pause the video, give this one a go. So tan both sides, that moves the tan onto the other side, implicitly differentiate, same as before. The implicit differentiation of tan y is sec squared y dy by dx. Now we want to make it dy by dx equals, so divide by that sec squared, and you've got 1 over sec squared. It's tempting to turn that into a cos squared, but it's probably not the best thing to do, because you want to be linking sec squared with tan, and there is a link between sec squared and tan. You can always remember it by just starting again with sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 and dividing everything by cos squared and you get the identity of tan squared y plus 1 is equal to sec squared y. So sec squared y is equal to tan squared y plus 1 and if tan y is equal to x like it is at the top there then replace tan with x and you've got x squared plus 1 that can replace sec squared So the answer to this question here is dy by dx is equal to 1 over x squared plus 1. Now actually all of these are in the formula booklet. In the further maths section of the formula booklet you've got these derivatives arc sine, arc cos and arc tan. So you never need to remember them but you do need to be able to show it if the question says show that arc sine's derivative is this expression over here. So you do need to know this technique and how to do it but if it's in the context of a question then you can just use the formula booklet, just like I'm going to with these questions. So y equals arc sine x squared, so this is a chain rule differentiation. You differentiate the inside, then differentiate the outside. Differentiating the inside will give you 2x, and then differentiate the outside, this is where I'll turn to the formula booklet, the derivative of arc sine is this expression here, so I differentiate the outside function, but in terms of the inside function still. So this answer is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus, not x squared, but it's in terms of the inside function, so it's going to be x squared squared, that will be x to the 4. So tidying up this answer, it will be 2x over the square root of 1 minus x to the 4. So that's the answer for part A. Moving on to part B now, y equals arc tan 1 over x bracket, sorry, uh, over 1 plus x. Uh, could do this by um, chain rule again, but I think actually with this one, it's actually easier if you apply the techniques that we saw in the examples before and tan both sides and then differentiate implicitly on both sides. So tan y will differentiate into sec squared y dy by dx and then this is a quotient rule differentiation so you differentiate the top multiply by the bottom take away the top multiply the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared so that's quotient rule there just tidy it up expand the brackets on the numerator there and you get this expression here uh, we want dy by dx to be made the subject so get rid of the sec squared y on the other side and divide it by, um, by sec squared. But uh, so we're nearly there. We've got dy by dx equals this, but we really want this uh, sec squared y uh, in terms of x. So again, we'll turn to that tan squared plus 1 equals sec squared y identity. We know that tan is equal to 1 minus x over 1 plus x. But now we're just going to need to tidy up this expression here because we've got 1 over sec squared y. So I'd ideally like to flip this fraction upside down. So I'll rewrite 1 as the same denominator as what I've got here. It would be 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared. You can see that this could simplify down to 1. But then I'll expand the brackets on the numerator and add the two expressions together um, because the denominators are the same. When you simplify this, you'll have minus 2x and 2x cancel out. And then you'll have 2 plus 2x squared. And then it'll be over the denominator, the common denominator on these fractions of 1 plus x all squared. 
So if sec squared is equal to this expression here, then 1 over x sec squared is going to have to be this fraction flipped upside down. So I'm nearly there. I've nearly got my simplified answer. I've just flipped around this little red expression in the bottom right hand screen down here. I can cancel out the factor of 2 from the top and the bottom. And I can cancel out the 1 plus x squared from the top and the bottom as well. So I'm actually just with something left with something very much simplified, which is minus 1 over 1 plus x squared, which is a pretty simplified answer. So I'm pretty happy with that. So there we are. Sometimes you might want to use the formula booklet and sometimes you might want to use the technique of moving the trig expression on the other side and then using implicit differentiation. So two different styles there. All right, your turn to have a go. We've got two questions actually for you to do at the end of this video today. Pause the video and have a go at the first one. Okay, so this is a product rule differentiation, so dy by dx, and it will be helpful to know what these two derivatives are. Let's go to the formula booklet. So differentiate the first one, multiply it by the second one, so that's going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared times arc cos. And then it's going to be add, keep the first one the same now and multiply it by the derivative of the second one, which will be minus, so I'll swap that minus to a plus to a minus, and then 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. I could do a bit of factorising here. I've got a common factor of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, and then in my brackets it's going to be arc cos minus arc sine. And there we are, that's the answer for the first part. And I've got two questions here because I actually find the second question a pretty interesting question. So pause the video and give this question a go. Okay, let's have a go at the question then. We've got uh, f of x equals arc sine x plus arc cos x. Uh, we want to consider the integral of the derivative. Now, Generally, when you integrate the derivative, it's equal to the initial function because it might have a plus c in it, uh, plus c. Um, so when you differentiate the integral, because the two things are opposites, you're back to where you started effectively, but then you may have to plus a c if necessary. So that's what we'll do then. We will set f of x equal to the integral of this derivative. Now, what is this derivative? This derivative is, well, arc sine from the formula booklet is 1 minus, the square root of 1 minus x squared. And the derivative of arc cos is minus 1 over 1 over x, 1 minus x squared dx. Now actually, what ends up happening is these two things will just cancel each other out. So now, you're effectively at a point where you're integrating nothing. So, when you integrate nothing, all you get is the constant term that you will get on the plus c at the end of any integral. So what we've just shown is that f of x is just a constant. It's always that same constant no matter what you put in for x. But let's show that it's actually equal to pi by 2 by plugging in x equals an easy number. Let's put in 0. It's always going to be the same constant, but we'll put in 0. So arc sine 0 plus arc cos 0 is equal to that constant. And we're just working out the constant here in this integration problem. So arc sine, that's 0. Arc cos, that's pi by 2. Uh, and that's equal to c. So there we are. c is equal to pi by 2. So what we can infer from this is that f of x is always equal to pi by 2 for any value of x because we've shown it through the integration. The integration of the derivative will lead you back to the same function you started with. And when you integrate that function, the derivative function, you actually just get the constant. And then when you plug in an easy value for x, you just get c, which is uh, pi by 2. So the function here is always equal to pi by 2. Now, 
So why might this be the case? Is there another way that we could explain this? Well, if we take any right angled triangle, then we should also see this fact appear. If we've got 180 degrees inside your right angled triangle, uh, as pi radians, pi by 2 radians will already be taken up by the angle of pi by 2, the right angled triangle, right angle angle in the corner. Now, if I label my sides, my, label my angles A and B, and my sides of 1, and x, then I can work out angle A, because angle A, when you do cos of angle A, you get adjacent over hypotenuse, that's x over 1, and if you inverse the cos, you get angle A is arc cos, or cos inverse. You could do the same thing for angle B, but this time x is the opposite side, so it's sine, so it's sine B, will equal opposite over hypotenuse, that's x. Uh, so then b will equal, when you um, inverse sine both sides, you're going to get arc sine of x. So now what we've shown is that a plus b, the two angles that we've got left over in our right angled triangle, because the angles inside a right angled triangle must add up to 180, it must be that a plus b will equal the remainder of that angle when taken away from 180, that's pi by 2 radians, so therefore arc sine mu plus arc cos must equal pi by 2 as well. So there we are, we've got a nice geometrical interpretation of the question, and we've got an integral of a derivative showing exactly the same thing. That's why I thought I'd show you question 4, it's quite an interesting one to show you. Alright then, there we are, that's all we're going to go through in this video then. Make sure you have a go at the questions from exercise 3c on page 64, and uh, hopefully you found this video helpful and a little bit interesting at the end. Thanks for watching.